Greetings. Welcome to my review of the 25-inch arcade monitor universal chassis replacement. This is a Wii Yaw chassis. Uh, I got this from dirtcheaptrading.com. They're about a hundred bucks and in my opinion they work pretty well. Uh, so I'll go over everything that you get with the kit and how it comes from uh, the factory so to speak. And then we'll discuss how you can apply it to your picture tube and get yourself up and running. So we'll discuss here what comes with the chassis. Now it comes with everything. First I'll discuss how it powers up. Now it comes with a cord and a connector here you can just plug right into the wall. Uh, what I would just choose to do if I were you is just dike this off and splice it into your existing arcade power wire uh, or your wiring for your to supply to your monitor. Uh, this does not need an isolation transformer but it's never a bad idea to use one because um, you never know what could happen. But anyway so I would you can, if you have a, like a MAME cabinet or something, you can just plug this into your power strip and be fine. Uh, but if you want to use your existing arcade power wiring, that would be the way I would go. But it does come with the regular AC power cord. Uh, and then it comes with your actual remote board. It has adjustments on here for horizontal width, brightness, horizontal position, horizontal hold, vertical size, vertical hold, and horizontal position. So it has all of uh, your major adjustments there uh, and it does have this little button here this little button here is your degauss system uh, when you hook up your degaussing coil to this chassis uh, you simply throw this switch and it'll send a degaussing wave across the monitor and degauss it for you so it pretty much eliminates the need for having a needing a degaussing wand so that's pretty handy uh, and there are other adjustments on the chassis itself for other things and I'll get to that when I get to that but that's the remote adjustment board and there's plenty plenty of length on your cable here for that. Uh, it also comes with the grounding strap that wraps around your picture tube and then this little socket here will plug on to your neck board which the pin is right there for that. And this is a rather small neck board uh, and the reason behind that I would imagine is because you've only got the three adjustments for red, green, blue here. You have red, green, blue adjustments here and you have red, green, blue adjustments down here. Uh, I believe it's. Um, let's look here. Okay, yeah, red. This is red gain. This is green gain, and this is blue gain. And then these are your other fine adjustments for your red, green, blue. So normally on a regular neck board, you're going to have these. All six of these are going to be on the neck board. But for this chassis, three of them are down here, and three of them are up here. And it's just a, a regular old neck board. You've got. Uh, your transistors here for red, green, blue, and your your neck position or neck pins. So uh, it pretty much entails what the neck board looks like. Then you have your regular standard connector here for your red, green, blue ground and sink, and that hooks up right here. Then you have your connector here for your yoke windings. Uh, I believe green and yellow are your horizontal, and red and blue are vertical. I could have that backwards, but um, if you go to uh, 8liners.com and click on their monitor FAQ, it goes into detail on how to uh, install one of these on a universal tube or any tube you want to use. Uh, but these are your yoke winding wires um, and they hook on, there's two connections actually, and they're, they're back there, you can see them, there's one, there's two. I believe they're for different uh, resistance readings for different yokes, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I have tried it on both and it works fine with either one so I'm not sure why you have two of them but I'm sure someone out there will correct me on why but anyway uh, that's pretty much the whole uh, kit and caboodle of all your accessory wiring and harnesses and then of course you have your, your anode cap here that plugs onto your anode hole for your uh, off your flat back to your tube nothing we fancy about that we all mostly know about that so uh, and as far as the other adjustments you have an adjustment here for your pin cushion now pin cushion for those of you who don't know, is what gives the monitor image the wraparound. When you have a curved CRT, uh, the image curves around the outside of the, the monitor to uh, conform to that shape. Now, some chassis don't have a pin cushion ability, and it, pr it projects the image in a perfect square on the screen. Uh, it's more actually more rectangular, I guess, but... Uh, if you ever seen an image where you cannot adjust it, where the, there's black in the top and bottom corners, but it, it does stretch all the way to the edge of the screens because you can't 
wrap, you can't contour the image to the shape of the tube, but that's what pincushion does. So that's the adjustment for that. Then you also have a uh, B, B plus voltage adjustment back here. That's for your B plus voltage. Don't mess with that. It's set from the factory, unless you have issues with the chassis, which you shouldn't. Um, then you have a vertical line in here. Vertical line is also another adjustment for your vertical size. If you uh, can't fine tune your vertical size adjustments with your remote board, you can another one, adjustments right there for it. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, so that's what all this entails. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks. It does come in a nice box that's well protected with the styrofoam and everything. But so that's pretty much it for describing it. Now I do already have one installed on this Henrix Polo tube. It's all done up and ready to go. So I'm gonna uh, pause here and describe what you have to do and the qualifications you have to meet to be able to use the tube you wanna use with this chassis. Hang on one second. All right, so in order for you to be able to use the picture tube that you wanna use, your yoke windings must read the correct readings. Now what that entails is your uh, vertical yoke windings must read between 6 and 12 ohms. Ohms is a resistance for those for the layman out there who don't know. Uh, now your horizontal windings must read 1.5 ohms or higher. If it's below that, you can add a, I think it's a 100 ohm 10 watt resistor, I'm not sure. Uh, 8liners.com under the monitors FAQ, you can see what you need. but the. Uh, the horizontal must read 1.5 ohms and higher. If those readings, if those readings are not within that parameter, you will not be able to use that yoke or that tube for this chassis. So basically, what I have here is I have a Hanrax Polo tube with uh, a little bit of screen burn. It's got some uh, UMK3 screen burn on it, but nothing that's too severe. Uh, the tube came out of uh, my Killer Instinct 2 that had the bad Hanrax Polo chassis, uh, so I bought this thing to replace it with. And I've already turned it on, everything is checked out. So, uh, but I want to show you how to read your yoke windings. These, this connection right here is your vertical. This connection right here is your horizontal. Now, it, there, vertical, horizontal. Now, it differs with different chassis and different yokes. Uh, but universally speaking, the, the smaller wires are going to be your vertical, and your thicker are going to be your horizontal. And now, on a Wells Gardner, uh, I believe it's different. You've got the two outsides and then two insides. Two outsides and two insides are, are different. Just uh, That's why this connector here comes with the color-coded wires. Uh, just make sure that uh, when you read these things out, if you've got between 6 and 12 ohms, that's going to be your vertical. If you have 1.5 or higher, the other side is going to be your horizontal. So just make sure you've got the right ones when you hook them up. Uh, but for me, on this particular polo tube, this was the vertical and this was the horizontal. So vertical is is uh, purple and blue. I have the purple and blue going to here since this is the vertical, the green and yellow. And you can see I've got them twisted there with the wire ties. So that being said, the green and yellow should read between 6 and 12 ohms. So get your handy dandy little meter here. Flip it to the mine. Go to, uh, start off the lowest setting is 200 ohms. So uh, I'll see if I can't set this here probably not hell no all right so I will go ahead and probe these and should be between 6 and 12 I have 5.9 it fluctuates between 5.9 and 6 if I take this lead back out put it back in 5.9 5.9 that's close enough you know a point Point 0.2 isn't going to make any difference. So it's supposed to be between 6 and 12. It's, it's for all intents and purposes, at 6, so that's fine. Uh, now, the other side should read 1.5 or higher. Your horizontal is supposed to read 1.5 or higher. Now, now, I got my leads in there. You can see. Here's what I read. 2.0, 1.9. So I'm 1.5 or higher, and I'm at 6 on the other side, so I am good. You, you must be within those readings or it's not going to work. So I will plug this back on, and I'm all hooked up uh, as far as everything else. I got my anode cap on there. 
I got my connections hooked up for my yokes. I got my connector hooked up for the ground here that hooks to the neck board. Uh, and I believe that's it. I don't have a, an input signal. I can, I'm going to do that later. Uh, but I'll just turn the flyback up so you, can, you guys can see the monitor in action. Uh, but everything works fine. Uh, yeah, I don't have an input signal going to it. And then the remote board's up here. And all it's left is to plug it in. I will plug it in the wall and I will show you guys that it's working. So one second. All right, well here it is. Uh, it's hard for you to see. I got the light out so you can see the picture tube come up. But uh, here it is. I got the power cord right here. I'll plug it in the wall and we'll check it out. See if this worked out. All right, you can hear it power up. Or I could anyway. You guys probably could too. And there's my image, so to speak. And you can really see the screen burn from the UMK3 character bio text, and then there's also, you can kind of see the Killer Instinct 2 timer and power bars, but there it is, a 25-inch universal chassis replacement, successful. So not much to it. Um, you guys feel free to get one of these for yourself as long as your yoke readings are reading what they're supposed to. And I'm going to give it an input signal eventually and, and do all of the fine adjustments and everything. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm sure there's guys out there who know more about this than me. But uh, So feel free to toss in your two cents on what's going on with uh, if you have one of these or want to get one. Uh, any recommendations? I highly recommend it because they're really easy to install and there's not much to it. Of course, you kind of have to know what you're doing a little bit. Uh, but I did want to show off this degaussing switch. It's, in, it's unfortunate that there's nothing here that needs to be degaussed. Uh, but when I, I'll show you what happens when you press it. It'll uh, see now. Look at the screen. Imagine this is what this is what your screen looked like, covered in, in uh, discoloration. So I press the switch again. Watch what happens. Fixed, gone. So that's what that's another reason I like these chassis a lot. If you move your machines around and you get to a place where you have a discoloration, you don't have to get a degaussing wand out and take your glass out and do all that bullshit. You just press this button a few times and it, it degausses your system for you. So I love that. So for the uh, you get plenty of bang for your buck with these things. I really like them. So again, thanks for watching. Any problems or questions, let me know and uh, see you next time.